Section 13.1 Vector Fields, Video 6. This will be the final video for this section. Um, there's not a whole lot in it, but actually I'm going to put more in it than is required for now. This example we work will actually be talked about more later in Section 13.3, two sections down the road, but we might as well take a sneak peek at it now. Um, this last part introduces something called a conservative vector field, which is super important for section 13.3, and if we get there, section 13.5. The word conservative here and the word potential actually have physics context. Uh, Mr. Walker can elaborate a lot more than I can, so it has to do with energy, conservation of energy. But the definition is a vector field, capital F, is conservative if capital F is the gradient of some function F in other words, if you're the gradient of something. So you could say that a conservative vector field is a gradient vector field and vice versa. Uh, the function, lowercase f, is called a potential function for the vector function, capital F. In other words, if a vector field is the gradient of a function, that function is the vector field's potential function. In section 13.3, there are going to be some really important things that you can do on a conservative vector field. So it's a natural question to ask, if I give you a vector field, how can you tell if it's conservative? If so, what is a potential? For example, let's consider the vector function capital F, where the component function for the i is y plus cosine of y, and the component function for the j is x minus x sine of y. Is this a conservative vector field? If so, what is, its, what is one of its potentials? And I say one of its potentials because if you go back to the definition, your potential gets the gradient calculated, which is just a sequence of partial derivatives. If your original function had a constant, it would disappear on each of those partial derivatives. So if you have a potential function, you can always generate another one by slapping on some constant at the end, as if you were integrating. Hmm, I wonder why that's going to come into play. But that's if, uh, if you're a conservative to begin with. So how can we determine if a, if a vector field, at least in two dimensions, is conservative? And again, what I'm about to show you is a sneak peek into 13.3, but I think we can handle it now. Let's think about what it means to be conservative. To be a conservative vector function means that you are of the form partial derivative with respect to x times i plus partial derivative with respect to y times j. So if I already have a vector function that looks like this, how can I see, excuse me, if I already have a vector function, how can I see if its component functions are the partial derivatives of some other function, one with respect to x, one with respect to y? And the answer goes all the way back to when you first learned about mixed partial derivatives. For example, if you take the partial derivative with respect to x and then the partial derivative with respect to y, you would get the same results as if you took the partial derivative with respect to y and then partial derivative with respect to x. Let's call this function capital P and this function capital Q. You know, the way that we generically define them when we define the vector field. Some function p as the component function of i, some function q as the component function of j. So if this is a conservative vector field, then function p is supposed to be some function's partial derivative with respect to x, and function q is supposed to be some function's derivative, partial derivative with respect to y. And if it were, then the mixed second partial derivative should be equal. In other words, if we took the partial derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to y, we would get that. Partial of p with respect to y is the partial of f partial x with respect to y. And if we took the partial derivative of both sides of the second equation with respect to x, then the partial derivative of q with respect to x would equal the partial derivative of f, f with respect to y, then with respect to x. But if your, function is, if your function behaves, which basically means it's continuous on a region, then these mixed partial derivatives are supposed to be equal, which means that 
partial derivative of p with respect to y has to be equal to the partial derivative of q with respect to x. And this is actually a theorem that you'll be introduced to in section 13.3. But let's go ahead and talk about it now. To answer the question, is a two-dimensional vector field conservative? You see if the partial derivative of the first component function with respect to y is equal to the partial derivative of the second component function with respect to x. So now we have a way of answering the question, are you conservative? Now how do we find the potential? We'll see that in a second. So let's check to see if this is conservative. And by the way, if it's not conservative, there's no potential to find. So our p function is the component function for i, so y plus cosine of y. And our q function is the component function of j, so x minus x sine y. To check to see if this is a conservative vector field, we need to take the partial derivative of p with respect to y, the partial derivative of q with respect to x, and see if we get the same things. Well, with respect to y, the derivative of y is 1, and the derivative of cosine of y is negative sine y. And if we take the derivative with respect to x, the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of negative x sine y is negative sine y. And they're equal. So, since the partial derivative of p with respect to x is equal to the partial derivative of q with respect to y, just wrote that backwards, partial derivative of p with respect to x is equal to the partial derivative of q. Ah, I've written it correctly. I will say it correctly. Partial derivative of p with respect to y is equal to the partial derivative of q with respect to x. Then the vector function, capital F, is conservative. Okay, so we've answered the first question. But what's its potential? In other words, if we're saying that capital F is conservative, then capital F is equal to the gradient of some function lowercase f. Well, how do we find that? Well, if you're conservative, then your i component function is equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to x. So the partial derivative of f with respect to x is y plus cosine of y. Hey, we can integrate that with respect to x. Since the partial derivative was with respect to x. dx. Now be careful. Oops, I don't know why I put that x there. Actually, I do. I'm getting ahead of myself. So if we integrate both sides of this with respect to x, what we get is the original function. Almost. The antiderivative of y with respect to x is xy. The antiderivative of cosine y with respect to x is x cosine y. But here's the catch. Plus c, plus c. No. It's not a plus c, and here's why. If you take the partial derivative with respect to x, a constant isn't the only thing that might have disappeared. There might have been a whole other function of y out here. For example, I could put tangent of y plus 3, and if I take the partial derivative with respect to x, that thing's gone. So here's where you got to be careful. When you're integrating something that was partially differentiated, you don't pick up a constant, you pick up a function of the other variable. In other words, there may be some function of y over here, we'll call it g of y, that would have disappeared if I took the derivative, partial derivative with respect to x. So how do we figure out what that missing piece is? Well, we know something about partial derivative with respect to y. If this is a conservative vector field, then the j's component function is the partial derivative with respect to y. So x minus x sine y is equal to the partial derivative of lowercase f with respect to y. But I have a representation of the function lowercase f, so I can take its partial derivative with respect to y. Partial derivative of xy with respect to y is just x. The partial derivative of x cosine y, the x is constant, so it stays put. The derivative of cosine y is negative sine y. So we get negative x sine y 
Now, what's the partial derivative of g with respect to y? Well, this g function contains no x's. Otherwise, it wouldn't disappear when we took the partial derivative with respect to x. It is strictly a function of y. So its partial derivative is the same as its ordinary derivative. And if we equate what we know about the partial derivative of f with respect to y from the conservative vector field, and what we know about the partial derivative of f with respect to y from integrating the partial derivative with respect to x, we see that they have the x in common, they have the negative x sine y in common. So they would cancel from both sides and leave a zero on the left and the derivative of g with respect to y. And remember, this is, I'm sorry, the, the derivative of g of y. And remember, this is only a function of y. There are no x's in it. There were no x's in it. So when we integrate this, we can just integrate it with respect to y. Integral of 0 dy is equal to the integral of the derivative of the g of y dy. Fundamental theorem of calculus kicks in and says that the integral and the derivative cancel each other. So the right side is just g of y, running out of room. The left side is the integral of 0. Well, the integral of 0 is a constant because the derivative of a constant is zero. So our function of y actually was some constant, we'll call it k. Therefore, our potential function was xy plus x cosine y plus some constant, we'll call it k. Now, there will be times where your function is something more than a constant. Um, and, uh, well, you'll just run across that in 13.3. Like I said, I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't think there are any questions in your homework that actually ask you, is this a conservative vector field? And if so, what's its potential? At least not yet. Wait until 13.3. If you have any questions, please contact Mr. Walker. I know there was a specific application he wanted me to talk about, but I've already told you my experience with applied calculus, so he'll be the better person to ask. Good luck.